from a sunny but breezy Great Yarmouth. I'm at North Beach in Great Yarmouth, so just at the northern end. Um, not really out of the town as such, but uh, just at the northern end. Near the wind farm. Where aren't you near a wind farm around this Norfolk coast? It seems to be everywhere at the moment. I've just cast out first rods. Uh, got a pulley panel on one with squid, with whole squid. And on the other one, I've got a three hook flapper with blow lug on. Now, the three hook flapper, I have got three size 2 0 um, circle hooks on. Now, I haven't fished completely with circle hooks before. I've tried the odd snood with a circle hook on. But today, I'm going to try all three. And I've gone up a bit of size because I would just like to see whether there's something a bit more than a than a, just an odd whiting or a dab or whatever, so a bass would be nice. There are one or two about. Um, so we'll see how we get on with those. They've just been in, well, about a quarter of an hour or so, so I'll give it a few more minutes and I'll go and get them in and uh, we'll see what the situation is, whether there's crabs about or, or whatever. But uh, not too bad so far. I got set up eventually. I really must put the kettle on because I haven't had a cup of tea today yet because I came out quite early in the morning. Um, it's about three hours, I think, till about, no, two hours maybe to the high tide. Um, <laughs> taking a bit of a guess. <laughs> I don't really want to have to move, so I'm probably too far up the beach. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how we go on. So anyway, let's get the kettle on and make this cup of tea. And then I'll get, when the tea's made, I'll... Uh, get the rods in and we'll see what the state of play is. Certainly nothing on here. Let's say that. <laughs> Baits are stripped and a little, uh, a little white. <laughs> and it is lip hooked. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's just hooked through the lip. So I'll get him unhooked and uh, get him back in quickly. Right, it's just 23 centimetres, so uh, I'll get him back. I'll first cast on a fish. Can't be bad. Blow lug from uh, Galson Tackle. Seems some good big ones in there. A few smaller ones, but uh, I don't think that really matter. But uh, there's some really good ones there, so hopefully we'll catch some really good fish with them. Extra bait we've got here. Um, I've got some squid, which is stuffed with crab carp, which is all sort of the bits I presume when they uh, dress crabs, all the sort of rubbish bits, if you like. I don't really quite know, but um, hopefully that'll give a good scent trail stuffed inside a, a squid. Um, I've got a couple of pieces of mackerel there and some uh, just some odd little tip and baits of some uh, um, whiting that I had left over and underneath that lot there is just a, a one wrap of frozen black lug which just uh, just is for spares really just in case I need some if I don't need them they'll just go straight back in the freezer right that was all a little bit mad for a minute I thought I got the rods out let's just sit down I'll have this cup of tea I've been trying to have for the last few minutes so I get my cup of tea, sit down, a quick glance at the rods. rods. Where are the rods? Where are I? I can't see them. Oh, bloody hell. Anyway, <laughs> I get up and all the, ro the rods lay on the ground, tripod on the ground. So I'm thinking, oh, did I miss a really good bite? Maybe on that uh, pulley panel with that squid on. So I rushed over there and pulled it in. No, uh, nothing on there. So I thought I'll just uh, pull the other one in as well because one might have had a good bite, but I don't know whether that was a wind or whether well, I don't know what it was. But anyway, so I pulled the other the three up flapper in, and 
lo and behold, another whiting and a dab. So the whiting and dabs are still about. No bass, which would be nice. But the whiting and dabs are definitely here. And the dab was nicely hooked on the on the circle hook, so no problem with that. The whiting, though, had swallowed it. And I mean swallowed it. I don't know how it managed to get it in his mouth, really, because it wasn't very big. But, uh, so I don't think he's going to survive. He's uh, upside down in my bucket of seawater at the moment, so um, I don't think he's going to be all right. But I'll leave him for a bit. But if he don't get, if he don't sign, show any signs of reviving soon, I'll uh, give him a knock on the head. I think just put him out of his misery. Dab's all right though. That was nicely hooked. So we'll get them measured anyway, and uh, and then we'll see where we go from there. And I'll try and finish this cup of tea. Could jump us a thermal mug, so at least that'll still be warm. Right, I think there might be something on this rod with the flap again. Yeah, I think so. Let's have a look. It feels like there's something on there. Probably another white in, I suspect. Certainly not a 50 cent meat bass. Uh, nope, two little dabs. Two little dabs about the size of my my hand, if not smaller, it'll fit in the palm of my hand. But I think they don't think they swallowed the hooks. So there we are, I can keep them in the shot, one up there and one down here. Right, time to get the rods in again, let's see what we've got this time, see if they've got any more dabs or winding. There was something on here, but I'm not quite so certain now. Well, no. First time, I think, I've reeled in and not had a fish on. Mind you, I did cast that only about 20 yards out, so just to see what was a, whether there was anything really close in, but it seemed probably not, so it's going to be a case of casting it out a bit further again. But let's get baited up. Try not to get lugworm juice all over my trousers. Although they're stinky enough as they are now. I'm going to have to put them in the wash, I think. one
monster, this one. This deserves to catch a big fish, this one. But I'll probably get a dab that somehow managed to get this in its gob. See, no. good sized one. There, dribbling everywhere. Where's the other hook? There it is. Where's those other bits of worm? Right, let's say this deserves. Really deserves a decent fish on that. Right, wipe my hands. Get this bag out. Right, let's see what we get this time. Right, while I'm here, let's get the pulley panel in. I'm not optimistic about this, but you never know. Well, it says it might be. Well, I don't know, there might be something on here. If it did, I never knew it was the bite. It's either that or a big lump of weed. It definitely feels like cock's heavy. something what is it? it looks like a big lump of wheat <laughs> it was a big lump of weed and it was a big old crab hanging on it the crab fell off. <laughs> so, got a bit excited there. Crab was a decent size, I would have kept it on him. That fell off. And I wasn't going to risk getting my feet wet just to go and get it. the lump of weed. I can't show you the crab because it thinking well fell off. It was a big old crab too. It fell off in the surf and I just couldn't, oh, I wasn't going to risk diving about in the surf trying to get out of a crab. And no doubt it would have grabbed my finger or something. And the size of that crab you would not want it to get hold of your finger because you would know all about it if you did. It was a big old thing. Anyway, let's try and untangle this now. Let's see where it tied itself in knots. Oh, come out. 
There we go. Let's get that out there, out of the way. A pair of scissors and cut this off. Oh, come off. That is the trouble with bait elastic. I don't always want to come off very well. If you're not careful, you end up cutting your line and cutting your hook off. And then you have to play around and put more line or something on anyway. New hook or something. Right, put that in the rubbish. I always put those bits of bait elastic in the, or the bait with the, that's been put on with bait elastic. I always put them in the in the uh, in the rubbish. Save there being any more plastic or anything in the in the sea. Right, let's have a go with one of these I think I'm going to get really messy with this as you can see uh, right it's full of juices so really it should very attractive. do say if you poke an odd hole in these to let the juices out so a couple of holes in it just rinse this in the bucket because I always fear if these get sand in them they don't release they're not my most favourite thing, but I always find them fiddly to put on as well. There you go. Right, let's get this out. Okay, that big bait did get me a whiting. Well, no, that was the top hook, so it wasn't the big bait. The big bait got me this nice little dogfish. So, get them back in a minute. Right, okay, just had just had dinner, had my sandwiches. Nothing to cook this time. 
just having sandwiches, so I'm going to be home for tea, so I'll have a decent meal when I get out. Um, made myself another cup of tea, which is a bit hot to drink at the minute, so I'll just update you of what I caught so far. I think, I think, caught five dabs, I think five white, and that could be more, I can't remember, and one dogfish, that uh, big old lugworm, that didn't catch a big bass like I wanted, or any bass come of that, but it did catch a, a dogfish. It wasn't a very big one, but it was a pleasant change from dogfish, <laughs> pleasant change from whiting and dabs. So that's the lunchtime update. Right, my tea is still a bit too hot to drink, so uh, let's get this three up flapper in. I'm almost certain that's got something on it again. If it adds, I think not very much on it. Mm, if anything at all, actually. That started off feeling as if there was, but I don't know. Oh, yes, there is. They are one white in, one dab. <laughs> Both little low things. Right, so definitely something on this flap. Ooh, definitely. Could be another dogfish. Or crab. <laughs> but no, I think that's a fish by the bite. I don't think that's a crab. It is another dogfish. There you go, a little dab and another doggy on the beach. There he is, a bit bigger than the last one. But nice to catch. I can't, I don't know if he'll fit on my measure. I'll get a rough idea how big he is. Ooh, about 46, 47 centimeters. <laughs> Put him back. Measure this little dab. 20 centimetres. Right, that's the second dogfish today. So let's bait up. Yeah, finish my tea. Let's bait up and uh, get out there again. Maybe get another one. Okay, so now. 10 past 2. It should be about high tide. Not anywhere near as high as I thought I was going to be. I could have been a good 10, 15 yards nearer at the surf. Thought that was going to come a lot higher. Looking by the line of weed that's across the beach, but uh, I was wrong. Still had nothing on the pulley panel. Really hoped this squid stuffed with crab was going to be the bee's knees and really going to get something, but the only thing I've had on there apart from that big lump of weed, is that big crab, which unfortunately fell off just in the surf. It would have been a, a nice size, I think, to take home for the pot. But I don't know, I aren't a great lover of crab myself, but uh, probably the wife would have liked it. But anyway, that's the score so far. Everything's caught on the three hook flappers with the uh, 2.0 circle hooks. Even the little dabs can take a 2 0 circle hook, which is amazing. So you don't necessarily gain anything by putting big hooks on. So, uh, not a bad day though. Been enjoying it. Got two dogfish. So, something a little bit different for a change. Still would like a nice bass, so that would be ideal. And as far as the circle hooks go, there is, must be a definite knack to getting them out because they're still quite tricky to get out. So, I think what I might do. I think the barb on these is a bit too big really, but I might just nip it a little bit and just take the edge off it so that, all right, that not so us barbless, but just enough to make it a, a lump rather than a sharp barb. 
so um, hopefully they'll just come out a bit easier because of the way it shapes and then sort of comes back on itself it just makes it a little bit more difficult to get out so uh, again which sort of then defeats the object of trying not to damage the fish unless someone can show me a, 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 if there's a technique for circle hook removal which I suspect there probably is but I haven't found it yet sometimes they come out easily and other times they can be a real pain but still still better hooking than with ordinary J hooks they definitely don't hook as deeply as the J hooks do so that's one good thing but I have got one dead white in my bucket here so uh, I'll chuck that back in the sea and uh, the gulls can have that for a meal I haven't seen any uh, seals or anything I haven't seen any wildlife at all this morning there's been one or two gulls but that's it a few dog walkers but uh, not very many I was surprised thought that was going to be busier than that on the beach today because hello us breezy and it's a little bit cool but it's still a nice day for a walk on the beach not a bad day for fishing I must admit and especially as I caught a few so what's so like I say 10 past 2 plan of action now is I've got I've just baited up the pulley panel so I'll give that half an hour I'll bait that up again with this other bait that I've got in the bag that's opened and then I've got hmm, do I? I'll have to have a bit of a count up of worms and see whether to keep the pulley panel or not, or whether to put a, a flapper on that on that rig on that rod as well. I'll have to count up the worms because I don't want to leave till I suppose about five o'clock. It's time to pack up and then I'll be home for tea time. Right, just gone three o'clock. It's gone absolutely dead from being fish almost every cast. No, nothing at all. Just come back bait stripped, well, more or less stripped. So just to think it's just crabs. So nothing at all on the panel. So I've given up on that. So put just a two hook flapper on there with, I should think they're size 2.0 J hooks on this one, Aberdeen's. Um, it just was a, more of the blow lug and uh, still persevering with the three hook flapper with the 2.0 circle hooks on but like I say it's just gone completely dead as soon as it seemed to reach high tide boom nothing nothing since then but we'll see whether it's just that it is on that turn point where it's just neither coming in nor going out I don't know I think the wind direction has changed a bit so it's coming a bit more more easterly at the moment because it looks as if the wind turbines are turned around a bit but uh, I think it's time to put the kettle on again have my last cup of tea and uh, we'll just fish through the rest of the afternoon with those few uh, blow lug and uh, like I say earlier on I have got a packet of 10 frozen uh, black lug there so if need be I'll use them as well summary of the day started off great white in first cast and then white in and dabs virtually every cast um, and then interspersed with that was two dogfish and then once it reached high tide boom that was it nothing so I've had nothing for the past 
I should think almost two hours just clean hooks every time so I think crabs are just picking the picking the worms off so I've used all the worms up I decided that doesn't seem worth it I've got some of these frozen black lug but I'm gonna leave them I, I don't see the point in wasting them because it doesn't seem as if there's going to be anything about now so uh, I think I'm just going to get those in in a couple of minutes and uh, pack up and then get home. If you've watched this all the way through and enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. The more I can get, the better. If you want to leave a comment about anything at all, please do, and I'll reply to you. Okay, so back in the car. Did have one last white in on that last uh, last car, so maybe I should have stayed on a bit longer but used all my blow lug up decided not to break into the frozen blacks so uh, I'm now gonna go home so until next time goodbye